Okay, so um, I'm going to go over a little bit. Uh, there's already a lot of documentation uh, with the PowerPoints and the examples given um, on Blackboard, but I'm just going to go a little bit with words over this problem. Uh, this is the same problem that we've um, covered in class. We basically use this one to, to go through all the steps for uh, spring finite element type problems. So this is, you can see the um, little cartoon here, but I'm going to go through this as uh, I solved it using MATLAB. And, and, and basically, uh, you know, being able to do these things in MATLAB will make your life a lot easier. Uh, the only thing that's going to happen as we go through this class is the element stiffness matrices are going to become more complicated, larger, basically and uh, the problems may involve more elements and you know doing these things by hand becomes exceedingly tedious um, and time consuming whereas there really isn't any um, significant uh, additional time in solving these things in something like MATLAB okay especially if you learn a couple of tricks all right so uh, I'm going to look at those here uh, you can go through the PowerPoints as well uh, this is uh, the MATLAB editor that I'm kind of scrolling through here. So I've written this script file in the MATLAB editor. It's, it's just a text file. Basically, you can open it up in Notepad as well, just like we open up our um, NASTRAN input files. But, you know, uh, um, MATLAB has this sort of integrated development environment where the editor is built into it. And it's kind of nice because it shows... Um, highlighting properly, line numbers, uh, you can put in breakpoints for debugging and all this exciting stuff. Okay. Um, so basically the way I set up the problems is first I always do this clear that that makes sure that sometimes people's programs run on their local computer because they have some variables stored in memory and then if you run it on a different computer, it doesn't work anymore because those variables aren't stored in memory. So putting this clear in here basically makes sure that that doesn't happen. But then usually up the first part, I will define like problem parameters relevant for that particular problem. Uh, that'll change. Um, and then I will usually initialize a stiffness matrix. Then assemble the stiffness matrix, solve the problem, and then at the very bottom here, do some post-processing. You know, like this is step seven, right? Computing the element forces and the stretches, okay? So let's go through this in a little bit more detail. Here is the, the well, we should probably clear this all out. I ran it. Well, actually, that's a different problem, but here's the MATLAB command window. So, you know, this is where you do typical stuff. Um, and we'll look at that. And here on the right is the variables. So these are the ones that are in, in memory. So like if I do a clear here, you can see those disappear, right? But let's go through this problem, right? So this is two elements, three nodes. It's fixed at node one. We have a 500 pound force going to the left at node two, and then a thousand pound force going to the right at node three. Uh, the stiffness of the spring for element one is 1,000. Uh, oh, I have it backwards here. There actually should be pounds per inch. Right, and for the second one, it's also uh, the second element is two thousand, so it's twice that. All right, okay. Um, so I'm going to put a breakpoint here. Well, we'll start here because uh, this is pretty simple. Let's save this. Save. I want to save. Save. Editor. All right, so the, the using a breakpoint is kind of nice. This is part of the debugging environment. You can look online. You'll find lots of videos about how to use the debugger. But basically, this allows you to step through your, your script file like line by line. So I'm going to put a breakpoint here. And it's just going to, when I hit run, it's going to go through these lines, clear, define K1, K2, and K3, and then stop at this line. So right here, you can see. Currently, I have no variables defined in the workspace, so let's let's run it. Okay, it stops at this line 39, and 
it's executed line 30, 33, 34, 35, and 36. And if we go over here, you can see that those variables are defined in the workspace. You can even see the values of them, right? Now this one is going to, this is our global stiffness matrix. I've got three degrees of freedom for this problem. So it's going to be a three by three. So when I step over this, the little green arrow goes to the next line. It's executed this command. And you can see now we have K which is a three by three matrix, all zeros, all right? Now, I'm gonna put the first element in. Now, this, this is probably the um, point that I really wanted to discuss mostly in this um, video. So this has to do with how MATLAB allows you to address matrices, okay? So line 44 is going to define the stiffness matrix for the first spring element. It's going to be a 2 by 2. So let me step over that, and you'll see what it is, although you probably can tell from here. right? So it has, let me get this right on top. So there is the, the, the element stiffness matrix. It's 1,000 minus 1,000, and then the second row is minus 1,000, 1,000, right? That's, that's what you'd expect. It's a 2 by 2, right? Now, that has to go into the global stiffness matrix, but it's going to go into that upper left 2 by 2 section, right? So it's going in rows 1 and 2, columns 1 and 2. So there's this 2 by 2 block in the upper left of that matrix. Now, to do that, to address that part of the matrix, that's what's going on here. So 1 colon 2 means, in this first spot, means we're addressing rows 1 and 2, columns 1 and 2. Okay? They don't have to be equal. I mean, you can address row 1 and 2, columns 3 and 4. But, I mean, for this problem, we want to put the element stiffness matrix into rows 1 and 2, columns 1 and 2. Okay? And we have to add this part here because when we add the next element it's going to overlap so if you if you don't say that region equals what's there before plus the new element you're going to overwrite what was there before and that'll be incorrect you have to add it into what was there existing now for the first element it's not going to matter because this here is initially all zeros right you can actually even evaluate that and if we go here, you can see it's a 2 by 2 of zeros, right? That is the region that's zeros, okay? It's that upper left region, all right? But once we execute this line, it's going to take KE, the first element of stiffness matrix, add it into what was in that upper left region of the global stiffness matrix K, and then put that into that region of the global stiffness matrix K. So let's step. And now if you look at K... You can see K now has that first element stiffness matrix scattered into that 2 by 2 region. Now we have to add the second one in. Now the second element is going to scatter into rows 2 and 3, columns 2 or 3. And it's going to overlap the first element in the global stiffness matrix at the index 2, 2. So it's going to, we have to add onto this, uh, I can see if I can do it this way. Well, let me do it. Let me, let me just do K here. I can do it with the cursor. So it's going to go into this region here, right? And it's going to overlap here. So we're going to have to add the, the element from the second uh, stiffness matrix onto this diagonal, right? So actually, that one's going to add a 2,000 onto here, and it's going to make this 3,000. And that's why we have to have this uh, what was there before plus the new thing, not just plus KE. Okay, So let's go through. We take another step. Now we redefine KE. It, it's the same format as before. I, I call it KE. It's easy to cut and paste these things, right? But you can see now we use K2, which is defined to be 2,000 up here. So actually KE is now 2,000 minus 2,000 minus 2,000, 2,000. Now we're going to add that into here, into this region. And you'll get a 3,000 here. 
a minus 2,000 here, a minus 2,000 here, and a 2,000 here, right? So we take the next step, and now that's happened, right? And that's what we expect, right? And again, by putting it into the right subarray of the global stiffness matrix, we, we do the same thing that we're doing in class when we basically uh, augment the element stiffness matrix to be a 3 by 3, all right? So that, that's the big thing. I, I would recommend kind of fooling around with this type of notation. Like here is K, you know, if you want to see, um, uh, address an entire column, like the first column, well, that would be all the row. Oops, I'm sorry, I need to put K in front. K, well, I should probably do this, like K, 2, 2. That's just going to give me the value at 2, 2, right? If we do something like this, this is going to give me all the rows in column 2. So that's going to give me column 2. And you can see that's what we have here, column 2. All right? You can also do something like, you know, so this is going to give me rows 1 and 2, all the columns. So it's going to give me actually this. All right? And if, let's say, I wanted to get columns 1 and columns 3, you can actually do that too. If, you know, the, the subarray is not um, connected to each other, you can get the following bit of notation will allow you to do that. So this is going to give you rows 1 and 3, all columns. So it's going to give me this and then this. Okay, basically remove the middle row. Right? And there it is. You can see the middle row has been removed. Right? Now, now this is a new variable. It's 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 it is what it is. You know, if I just do something like this, say two times this, I mean you can see it gives me two times that, but it's not affecting the actual values in K, right? It's not affecting the actual values in K. This is taking the return value and multiplying by two, so it's a new chunk of memory, all right? So if you want to actually affect the values in K, you would have to do something like this, right? Oops. Oh, maybe I shouldn't do it. I'll do it and then I'll rerun it, but that's fine. Right, so this is taking two times what was in K, the row one and row three, and then putting it into row one and row three. And now you can see k has the two values in there, right? So we probably want to uh, undo that. So I'm going to go here and quit the debugger and then just rerun it to this point here, OK? So we'll be back to where we were before. Goes through clear, and now k is back to where we want it to be. All right, now what's going on with the rest of the program? All right, um, we define the force vector. There, it's just it's just uh, hard coded in. That's fine. So here's f. It's zero minus five hundred one thousand. Granted, in this first slot is the unknown reaction force, but you know we leave it at zero for now. Uh, the displacement vector we have to solve for. I don't know what it is, but it's going to be a three by one. So I step over that. Now I've got d defined. Okay. Now here is the the. Uh, bit more of an interesting bit here, all right? Uh, we're going to solve this reduced system. So we have the homogeneous boundary condition, displacement boundary condition, that the first node is fixed. U1 is fixed. It's zero, right? So we can solve the reduced 2 by 2 system as follows here, right? It's basically um, the system formed by rows 2 and 3, columns 2 and 3, multiplied by d2 and 3 equals f2 and 3, right? So again, we're using the MATLAB shortcut to do the, to address the uh, subarrays. So here I'm saying, okay, um, d, rows 2 and 3, is going to equal um, f2 and 3, basically times the inverse of k with the arrays 2, 3, 
columns two, three. So that that's this subarray, right? This is the same solve as you'd use before, right? But it's using the the subarray system, okay? And so that steps over. And now we've solved for D, and those are the values for D, right? That's the displacement. Um, another way we can we do that sometimes is you'll see, sometimes I will change this and I will define a variable like I solve, right? These are the, the indices that we're gonna solve for. And in this particular case, it's gonna be um, columns and rows two to three. And I could just go in here and call this I solve. It's, the, it's actually the same thing, it's just uh, another variable that kind of, I don't know, makes it a little cleaner, I guess. Whatever. Right. Let's rerun it. Okay, so now we're just about to solve. Here you can see I solve is two or three. And if you want to, let's just look at, you know, these arrays, right? So when I say K, I sol, I sol, it's giving me that subarray. Likewise, F, I sol, is giving me the last two elements in the force vector, right? So, you know, it's solving that reduced two by two system and putting it into D, into the correct locations of D, right? Same answer, same answer. All right, now we're going to go back and just basically compute the element stretches. So for the first element, the stretch is the displacement at the second node minus the displacement at the first node. And then the force is the stiffness of the element times that stretch. And then we do the same thing for the second element, but the stretch is the displacement at the third minus the displacement at the second node. And that's basically it. So, uh, I mean, it's really pretty straightforward, although I think that this, this addressing the uh, subarrays is uh, can be sometimes a little confusing for individuals, but being able to do it, it just makes uh, solving these problems in MATLAB just much much easier. Far fewer writing you have to do and chances of error. So I highly recommend you kind of struggle with a little bit and figure it out if if it's not um, obvious to you. Okay, all right. I hope, hope this has helped.